Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here, and in this video I'll be giving you guys a complete overview of the iCloud system that's been fully integrated into iOS 5 and both with Mac and Windows PCs. So before we get started with the demos, I quickly wanted to remind you of what iCloud is and how it works. So iCloud will store your music, photos, documents, and uh, much more of your data, and it will wirelessly push those items to all of your devices. So it's automatic, effortless, it doesn't require any syncing on your part, which is going to save a lot of time, and it basically just works. Uh, so Everyone who signs up is going to get 5 gigabytes of free data, and what's nice about this is that your music, apps, books, TV shows, and the photos in your photo stream do not count against this 5 gigabyte storage limit. Now, if you do find that you're going to need more storage, you can always upgrade. Apple does offer 10 gigabytes of additional storage for $20 a year, 20 gigabytes for $40 a year, and 50 gigabytes for $100 a year. Now most people aren't really going to reach this limit, uh, so what's included with the 5 gigabyte limit is mostly going to be your mail, documents, and other account information and settings. So for most people that's going to go a long ways. Now if you came over from mobile me like me, you're going to find that uh, you're going to get 25 gigabytes uh, right from the get go uh, for being a mobile me member, which is really nice. So the first way in which you can access your iCloud data is by simply heading over to iCloud.com. Once you've signed in with your account, you'll be greeted with these five web applications that you see here. So we have Mail, Contacts, Calendars, Find My iPhone, and iWork. So let's briefly take a look at each of these. So we'll open up Mail. And in Mail, it's a pretty simple interface. You've got your uh, mailboxes here on the left-hand side. The messages will appear in the middle, and the actual contents of the message will appear on the right-hand side. Next is Contacts. So Contacts looks very similar to the way it does on the Mac application. So you've got your Contacts on the left-hand side, and then the actual contents on the right-hand side. Next is Calendar. So in Calendar, you've got a Day View, Week View, Month View, and List View. And then you've got your calendars on the left-hand side. So there's the regular calendar, the home and work calendar. And if you want to, you can simply add more calendars by choosing Edit. And this is also then integrated with Reminders. And then Find My iPhone, of course, this isn't anything new. Apple's had this out uh, before iCloud was even available to the public, so I'm not going to go over that in this video. And then we have iWork. Uh, so we'll get into how iWork and Documents in the Cloud works uh, later in the video, uh, but here you'll see that there is the Keynote tab, Pages, and Numbers. So the next part of iCloud then is the client that is available for your computer. Uh, this works both with Mac and Windows, and if you're on a Mac it will be included with the 10.7.2 update. If you're on Windows it's just a separate download that you'll be able to access from Apple's website. So taking a look at the client here you'll be able to enable the features that you wish to have. So you've got mail and notes, contacts, calendars, bookmarks, photo stream, documents and data, back to my Mac, and there's even find my Mac. Now in here you've also got some other options. You can t manage uh, your iCloud storage and how much you've got left. So you're going to see that down here at uh, the uh, access bar, you're going to see that I'm only using 24.61 gigabytes of my available 25. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I think that for most people 5 gigabytes in fact will be enough and there's not really a reason to have to buy more storage. So we'll open it up here and it gives you a nice breakdown of how much data each uh, section of iCloud is using. So with backups, you'll see that's taking up the most data at this point, uh, but pretty close with mail there as well. So you'll see I have my iPhone backup, my iPad backup, and then my iPhone 4S backup. Then we've got mail, and also uh, you can delete certain things, like if you want to remove a backup, free, um, free up some storage, you can do that in here as well. And then we've got numbers, keynote, and pages, and there's even that iTunes movie trailer app using up some space as well. Lastly, of course, then you can access iCloud straight from your iDevice. So we'll open up settings here and you'll see the iCloud section. Once you've got that open, you're going to see the same features that we saw with the desktop client that you can choose to enable or disable. We scroll down to the bottom, then you'll see the storage and backup area. And in here, you can even uh, buy more storage if you want. And we can also see the breakdown that we saw on the desktop client of, uh, what, how, of what's using what amount of storage. You can also then enable the iCloud backup feature. So in the rema remaining portion of this video, I'm just going to demo each of these items on the list for you and I'll give you an idea of how they work. So in order to do that, then we'll head back over to iCloud.com. And what I'm simply going to do is add something to each of these web applications here. And we'll watch as they appear on my iDevice. So we'll open up Mail, and we're going to quickly compose an email to myself. And we'll uh, set the subject as iCloud test. We'll go ahead and send it. Then heading over to my device, we'll open up Mail. You'll see the messages appear. And if we go ahead and open it up, You'll see that pretty much instantly it's been marked as red then right on iCloud.com. 
Next, then we'll go ahead and create a new contact. So we'll open up contacts. We'll name it iCloud test. Choose done. We'll open up I, uh, contacts on my device and you'll see it has appeared here as well. Next, then we'll try out calendars. So we'll create a new calendar event and we'll name it test. Choose OK. Then head on over to my device. You'll see it's here as well. And then last but not least, we'll try out reminders. So we'll quickly create a new reminder. Name that test. We'll open up reminders. It looks like it's loading up here and there it is. Next up is documents in the cloud. So we're just gonna go ahead and make some changes on my Keynote app for iOS and we'll watch as they appear on iCloud.com. So we'll quickly create a new presentation. Uh, we'll choose white and we'll edit the text a little bit. Uh, let's type in Nate's tech update. And you'll see here that the presentation has already appeared on iCloud.com. Now that we're done entering the text, you're going to see that uh, the presentation is now updating on iCloud. So we'll just wait for that to finish. And once that's done, then you can open up the presentation as uh, a PowerPoint through PDF or through Keynote. This will also work then the other way around. So let's say I upload a document from my computer to iCloud.com. Those will be sent down to my iWork applications for iOS. So this uh, will work then the same way for numbers and pages. Next up then is photo stream. So what I'm going to do is take a screenshot on my iPhone 4S. Go ahead then and open up the photo app. And you'll see that uh, that photo is now being uploaded to iCloud. Uh, so we'll just have to wait. And then we'll open up photos on my iPad. And hopefully within a few seconds here it will appear there as well. And there it is. Uh, so this will also then work for your iPhoto app on the Mac, or if you're on a PC, when you download the iCloud client, it's going to create a My Picture folder specifically for PhotoStream, so those photos will appear there for you. So last but not least then is automatic app downloads. So we're going to go ahead and download an app for the uh, iPad App Store uh, that's also compatible with the iPhone 4S. And in a little bit then that app should begin downloading on my iPhone. And you'll see it has now appeared. Uh, this will also then work for iTunes music that you download or TV shows and uh, all of your iBooks. So this is a great way to get all of your media on all of your devices. So I hope you guys enjoyed this complete iCloud overview. Please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.